back. We will go to the five games in our college football pick em. It's been a while because the conference championship weekend is over. And these are five bangers, so to speak. And the only New Year's Six game we didn't pick was Oregon and Liberty because I thought we'd all pick Oregon. So Okay. You know. All right. So right now a game lead on Craig. And then there is Paul Emery. Garrett made a tremendous surge. It was under 500 for a long time, and now back. It was it was rough. Above 500. Good for you. Now, we start with Missouri and Ohio State, and Ohio State without McCord. Although based on some of the reactions from Ohio State fans, they don't think that matters. But I think it does. I take Missouri, and the Tigers are damn good anyway. Uh, I'm just going to take Missouri's going to have more of their full roster. And so that's why I'm taking that. I mean, like they're going to have all their playmakers is where Ohio state's not going to have their starting quarterback for 12 games this year. They're not going to have Marvin Harrison. They're probably not going to have a, a Mecca Ibuka. So, uh, they're not going to probably have Travion Henderson. So at the end of this, um, you know, all the draftable guys, you know, Missouri's got a whole bunch coming back. Ohio state's going to be playing, you know, next year's team. I think Missouri has the advantage in that, in that regard. Yeah, and this is the Cotton Bowl, uh, for yeah. what it's worth, uh, up there in Arlington at AT&T Stadium. Um, but, yeah, I think this is uh, greatly affected by opt-outs. I mean, I, I, if it was all equal, I'd pick Ohio State in this game. But you start with quarterback alone, and not that Kyle McCord was – a superstar by any means, but he's not a bum either. So I don't know the whole, like, well, we're not going to miss him at all. Um, he was your starter the entire season for a reason, so he was clearly better than your other options, but um, he's not even available. Um, your star receiver, uh, amongst others, not available. So I just think it's been Missouri's kind of year. Um, this has been a, a great run for them and feels like a great opportunity to go ahead and you know, win a big time New Year's Six bowl game and head on to the offseason with one of the better uh, years that you've had in quite some time. I would love to see Florida State without Jordan Travis and without others, but uh, they might be swim swimming upstream. Uh, we'll see what Georgia has as far as their emotional meter, but I'm tired of those excuses while well, we didn't care. It's a damn bowl game and you're pretty good. Why don't you close it out? We know Florida State has a lot to prove, and yet again, they shouldn't have to. Florida State, Paul, initially at Georgia, and you just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm riding with my guys. I don't know how they're – like, there's – like, if they did it, it would be on pure pride. They're – like, no Trey Benson, no Johnny Wilson, no Jared Verse. Uh, they're going to be down – Jordan uh, Travis. Uh, uh, Jordan Travis, a backup defensive tackle, and Malcolm Ray. Uh, they're going to be down Fabian Lovett, a starting defensive tackle. Uh, they're – uh, probably no Keon Coleman. So there's a lot of guys not playing in this game. Uh, Tate Rodemaker will be back at quarterback. Uh, but uh, I'm just I'm just betting on Georgia's opt-outs to, to hurt them a little bit more. I don't know. I'm just going to ride with my guys. It doesn't have to make sense. I'm riding with my guys. I'm taking Georgia. Yeah, as you should. Yeah, I'm taking Georgia. I don't think there's really too much conversation to be had here because of all the reasons that Paul listed. Uh, and, you know, had it been more equal footing uh, with everybody available, then this would be one of the better games, if not a very playoff-worthy game for certain. Um, would be great if it was still that and just didn't have the playoff label uh, because both these teams didn't get in, but they still had their full complement of talent. Um, but we don't get that opportunity to see that, so – we get what we get, um, and I think all things considered, Georgia's the better team. So, uh, yeah, I'll go with the dogs here, given the, situ the circumstances. Mr. Ross? No, I mean, I just I think that Georgia's – even with all the opt-outs, I think what's left from Georgia's talent is better than what Florida State has because they've amassed so much depth, and I think ultimately that's what's going to be the, the outcome of the game. All right, so Emory with Florida State at the end as well. He took Ohio State in the top column. And then Ole Miss across the board against Penn State is just a matter of just, again, the, the flow of this game could matter, but roll with, Ohio, uh, with Ole Miss and the momentum they have and also the athletes they have. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that uh, Penn State can hang with, with Ole Miss athlete-wise. I mean, they, they, this is what happens at Penn State. They are really good. But they're not great because when they play teams with better athletes, they get stroked. And that's what happened to them uh, this year. That's probably what's going to happen to them uh, in this bowl game. So, yeah, I don't, I don't expect anything different. I think Ole Miss uh, and Jackson Dart, uh, while they'll be playing against a pretty stout defense, I think they're going to roll. Uh, yeah, I don't know about rolling, but I do think they have a lot of good momentum. Um, and I do think that they are – 
um, you know, a team with a, a lot of mojo going on right now, whereas Penn State, uh, you know, you lose Manny Diaz. I don't know how much that, that matters in a bowl game and, and these weeks of preparation, but uh, I do think that they're um, not as much on a, on a curve up as, as the Rebs are. So, yeah, give me uh, Ole Miss in this one. Garrett, you take the, uh, the Rebels, and you're worried about them as an LSU guy that they have kind of gone up another level while LSU's trying to figure themselves out. They're 9-3. and three, They're good, but you like what Lane Kiffin's doing. Yeah, I really like what Ole Miss is doing. Uh, I think having your starting quarterback back, uh, it's going to be – you know, instrumental in this game. I just think Ole Miss has too much talent for uh, Penn State. I think Penn State will make this interesting for about a half, and then Ole Miss ultimately will pull away in the second half. All right, then there's – how about this? The number one ranked team in the country against Alabama, uh, brand name against brand name, and all of us have the Crimson Tide and Jalen Milrow and Nick Saban getting a chance to play either Texas or Washington. And wouldn't that be interesting if it's Texas again who beat them in Tuscaloosa across the board? Craig, we start with you at Alabama-Michigan. Yeah, I just uh, think Alabama's a bit more dynamic. This ought to be a great game, a real physical tug of war. But uh, I think that, you know, Bama with the way Jalen Milrow's been playing of late, um, they just seem to have a little bit of the the pep in their step. Uh, Harbaugh and and Michigan obviously have had a great run, but I just don't think that they played a a complementary of teams that – that Alabama has played. I mean, Ohio State, that was a great win for them. Um, but I just think Alabama's a, a little bit more proven, if that's fair to say, at this point, uh, just with who they played and uh, the way they played here near the end. But, yeah, this ought to be a, a slobber knocker for sure. Um, the Wolverines are going to be all over Milro, but um, he's a dynamic playmaker. I expect him to make just a couple plays that give – the Crimson Tide, the uh, the difference here. How much are we in love with the, the, again, Michigan and Alabama, when you look at the history of college football, they're right at the very top, along with Oklahoma and, and, and Ohio State and Texas, et cetera. How much are we, like, they barely beat Auburn on a last-second fourth down miracle. Uh, obviously, they're really better than they were, but are, are we drinking a little bit too much Alabama Kool Aid here? I, here's here's no, I, I don't think that we are, and I think this is going to be a, a close game because that's Alabama's pretty much played just close games this year. They haven't really, you know, save for a couple. But they've you know, won. Except they've won. won. Yeah, they've won. Um, I I think this Jalen Milrow is playing so well right now, and his improvisation is what will get you. And I also just don't think that Michigan has played against athletes like they've seen. They have not played against this speed, and I don't know if they're quite ready for it. And the way that they played on offense was very vanilla down the stretch of the season. It, it didn't hurt them because their schedule wasn't really that great outside of Ohio State and and a, I know a Penn State team that's in this, but um, those three had the same kind of crap schedule. So um, outside of Ohio State playing Notre Dame, you know, so I, I don't, you know, I just think that. What was I, Alabama's best win this year? Garrett? Georgia. Yeah. The game uh, that got I, them I, in the meant, playoffs. I meant yeah. prior to, uh, to, prior oh, to the champ. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, Ole Miss, they kind of beat up on Ole Miss. Ole Miss yeah, the LSU. They, they, yeah. they separated a lot this year in the second half. They might have been a little bit of a tangle and all of a sudden, poof, it seemed like in the second half their defense with Kevin Steele and company made some great, great adjustments. Now, look at this across the board, I thought, but no, Garrett and Emery going with the Huskies, that's fine. I mean, they're, they're unbeaten for a reason. A rematch of the bowl game last year where Washington was just better, uh, especially just enough, a, a little bit more. And Garrett, we'll start with you on the Huskies against the Horns. I just, I don't think Texas has faced um, a team this year with the core of receivers they're going to see that Washington has. And I think having McMillan back for Washington is an X factor. Um, Texas' secondary has struggled all year long. I know Ryan Watts should be back and should be more healthy than he's been all year long. Uh, That, I think, I don't know which Quinn Ewers is going to show up. He's been inconsistent at times throughout this year. Um, I think Michael Penix is really the difference maker in this. Uh, When you see Texas this year, they struggle to contain mobile quarterbacks. Now that their offense is starting to get going uh, with a rushing attack with Dylan Johnson, I think Penix's ability to get outside of the pocket is something that can expose Texas as they try to run away from the inside of that pressure with the defensive line with Sweat and um, Byron Murphy. That's just kind of where I'm looking at here. I think Texas could definitely win, but I'm going to ride with uh, was, uh, with Washington. 
Greg? I'm going with Texas. I think they've got the hot hand. Uh, I know that Washington's unbeaten, so I, you know, I understand that uh, they've got even even the hotter one. But I just think Texas has the makings from top to bottom. I mean, what area other than the secondary do you look at and you go like, yeah, I'm not so sure. I mean, and I understand against Washington, that's probably the one area you don't want to be all that uh, weak. But I think that they're going to be able to get after Michael Penix. I think they're going to make his life uncomfortable. I think they're going to shut down the running game for the most part, and they're going to force him to have to throw to win this game. And he does not do that week after week. He doesn't even have games where he's throwing a touchdown every single week. And I think this might be one of those. Or it'll be a game where he throws like four of them and they win – you know, in a shootout style or something along those lines. I just – I like Texas going into this playoff. I think the question you had on offense, oh, Jonathan Brooks get hurt. Okay, gets hurt. Well, three other guys lead the team in rushing in their following games, uh, and a couple of them have 100-yard performances. So if you didn't know much about Jonathan Brooks, I don't even know if you'd notice that he was gone, quite frankly, in the, in the couple of games that he's missed. Um, they're just as filthy a wide receiver. I mean, maybe you'd have Washington above them, but I don't know how many other teams, LSU, Ohio State, and then who else are you throwing in there besides Texas? I think Texas Nobody. is right there in that mix as, as far as having talent. I mean, how about Washington's defense? I mean, what do they have to contend with here? Yeah. If Quinn Ewers is on, even worse, because you talk about guys when they flip that certain switch. I mean, Penix has it too, but Quinn Ewers just seems to have a – a, a big game type of a focus to him that when he's locked in like he was in the Big 12 championship game, he can be really, uh, really deadly. So, yeah, I, I just like Texas overall better. I like their defense and, and offense together as a combination uh, better than I like uh, Washington's defense and offense as a combination. So that's where I am there. But, yeah, certainly the UT secondary against Penix is the big weak point matchup that a lot of people are pointing to, and, and deservedly so. But I think Washington's going to have their hands full as well. Texas, 94th in the country against passing yards, allowing passing yards. But guess what? Washington's 120. And they had some of theirs where they had the dodge bullets, which every good team has to. Alabama was able to. Uh, Michigan pretty much just did whatever they wanted to do, but that Ohio State game was obviously very competitive. But everybody has to dodge bullets. You can't be the perfect team. There aren't many 2001 Miamis. And even then, there's probably something they didn't do quite as well. But I do think this could be a shootout. It should be a shootout. But uh, the Johnson factor running back really helped Washington when they went against Colorado. I was at USC. And I don't know. Again, I haven't seen anybody just take the ball and pound it away because of who you have with uh, Sweat and also Byron Murphy, but really other guys. But I, I'm taking Texas. I just feel like what could be the difference, special teams and getting an extra turnover or two with what that defense can fly around the football and make that happen. Yeah, and uh, we got to call Kobe uh, Black here a second. I will say I'm picking the team that he's about to go play for uh, because I just think that that defensive front is going to be a little bit too much, like Craig said. I think they'll get after Michael Penix, uh, and I think that they will make them one-dimensional. Look, uh, Roma Dunze and those guys are going to get theirs a, a few times, but um, I, I think ultimately that's what's going to be the difference. And I think a team, uh, I think Texas maybe makes a special teams play uh, in there to to swing this one. I think it'll be close, uh, but I do think that Texas uh, Texas wins the game. Texas in the country defensively uh, tied for fifteenth and forcing turnovers, and Washington. I don't see them among the top 50. Texas with such great speed. Xavier Worthy, maybe he takes a punt back, who knows. Or Kalen uh, Williams, maybe he runs a kickback